the, the market's low in inventory, as yeah. everybody knows right now. Um, so, you know, getting a listing right now is really about what is that, what is that seller's goal? Are they downsizing? Are they, are they moving out of state? Um, th there's, you know, it's, it's tough to be a seller to take advantage of the market um, if you don't have a plan in place to go somewhere next, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we always sit down with our clients when they call about, you know, why, about listing their home, why they want to list. Really finding out that, um, that motivation behind it because yeah. that dictates how we market and try to sell the home. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Break It Down with Braden. Super excited. I've got Craig Bennett and Regina Alvarez with the Craig Bennett Group on me today. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank, thank you. you. Um, it's been awesome. I've been uh, had the privilege of working with Craig for the last couple months now and just been cool to see kind of where you've progressed over the years and just kind of the real estate business that you've kind of had over the years. And um, so excited to have you guys on and uh, learn yep. a little bit more about Regina as well. Yeah. So uh, why don't you guys... Why don't we get started? Just tell me a little yep. bit about how you got started in the business, how you got to the Craig Bennett Group. Absolutely. Um, I uh, have a, an accounting and finance um, background, been in that business for 20 plus years and decided I wanted a little bit of a change. Um, real estate has always been a hidden passion of mine. So um, I decided, why, why not wait? Let's get it, my real estate license now, which is what I did several years ago. And um, I hooked up with Craig Bennett. I met him at the gym. And uh, it was quite a, a friendship from the beginning. And he's been a great mentor and uh, sort of showed me the ropes along the way. And we're great business partners now. Love it. Yeah. Love it. How about you, Craig? So I've been in real estate for about 34 years. I started with my dad's brokerage right out of college. And um, in the West Valley, we had a brokerage in, in Goodyear called Trace Realty. Um, my dad sold that shortly thereafter. And s he stayed focused on the commercial and development side of the, of the industry. I stayed in residential. Had a few different um, brokerages along the way, worked in new home sales, was a designated broker for a company called Essential Properties in the West Valley. We ended up selling that company to my home group in 2018, which is how I landed at my home group and been happy there ever since. And it's a great brokerage to be affiliated with. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Um, so I know you've kind of been around in a while as well, and you've kind of uh, had a different role with Tom Ferry. Um, and Tom Ferry, for those of you that don't know, is the largest real estate coach, I think, in the nation now. Right. Um, thousands of coaching clients all throughout the nation, um, mostly all real estate clients. But I know they kind of difference between the real estate industry. Some of them are, are lending clients as well mm -hmm. um, and other industries or other um titles and roles in the real estate realm, if you would. Right. Um, what was kind of your background in, in, with Tom? So Perry? I joined with Tom in about 2015, 16, about 2015. And I was um, one of his coaches. I think it was like the 40th coach that he hired at that yeah. point. Worked with that group of people at the same time. We, um, I coached for him for a couple of years. It was a great experience. Learned a lot. Traveled for Tom um, to different events. And um, yeah, it was a great experience. Had about 60 clients I worked with. 60? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, it became very full-time, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. why I had to step aside because yep. real estate is my passion. And, I, and it was you know, what I had been doing for so long, and I didn't want to um, leave that. So I uh, made a decision to leave the group, but still affiliated with them. I'm still a client of Tom Ferry, and I um, have a coach there and work yep. with them every week. Awesome. Yeah. So you're still continuing your education with them and just kind of learning all the new stuff. Do they, Absolutely. Have they uh, come out with any new ticks, trip, eh, tricks or tips? Wow. <laughs> tricks or tips uh, in the real estate industry that you've kind of uh, started to use recently. So, you know, there's, it's always evolving, right? And the thing that's great about, about being affiliated with someone like Tom Ferry is that we um, – is he talks to real estate agents all the time. Yep. I mean, through his coaches, it all trickles up to Tom. So the inf the um, information he has to convey to his cl you know coaching clients is just vast, right? So everything from you know like really <laughs> over indexing on on video right now. Um, if agents aren't doing video, they should be doing video. It's, yep. it's video, really, video, video. Yeah, it's all about yeah. video. Yep. Um, you know, um, you know, if you don't have a Google My Business page, you should. Um, that's a huge thing right now. Yep. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, things happening in the industry that's really, you should be driving your business back to your own Google and other sources like that. So I think Tom's, you know, it's not that he comes up with something that's so new and earth shattering. He figures out the, like the, where, where the industry is heading and how to kind of stay ahead of it for your marketing and your own business. And he's really, the message really is, you know, a lot of nuts and bolts back to basics real estate, yep. you know, geographic farming, 
um, calling your past clients in sphere of influence, really staying in touch with your client base, right. which is what we try to do yeah. and what we do do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I've been to several of Tom Ferry's events, and yeah. every time I leave there, there's something informational that I, I take away from it that I always can implement into my business. 100%. So it's, yep. it's it's pretty awesome, and yep. uh, I'm yeah. a huge proponent of his. And anybody, anytime somebody's like, "Oh, I'm not sure what direction I need to go," I'm like, "Go to Tom Ferry. After you leave one of his events, you will know exactly right. what you need to be doing." <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about um, a listing. So. Uh, right now with the market kind of crazy, um, someone wants to sell their house. What does that listing process look like with you guys? So I'll kind of start from, okay. a, from a, our team perspective. So, um, yeah, I mean, really right now listings are, are um, the, the market's low in inventory, as yep. everybody knows right now. Um, so, you know, getting a listing right now is really about what is that, what is that seller's goal? Are they downsizing? Are they, are they moving out of state? Um, there, there's, you know, it's, it's tough to be a seller to take advantage of the market. Um, if you don't have a plan in place to go somewhere next, right? Yeah, yeah. So we always sit down with our clients when they call about, you know, why, about listing their home, why they want to list, really finding out that, um, that motivation behind it because yeah. that dictates how we market and, <clears throat> and sell the home. Um, the process is really, you know, um, after we're doing this for so many years, we, um, I stay on top of my marketing, so it's always evolving, and, and we sit down with the client, kind of come up with a marketing plan for their home specifically yep. um, in, in the area that it's in. We... Um, one of the things that, that Regina and I have been doing um, is video on every listing, whether that's a small home in, in a corner of the valley. Yep. Everything gets a video. And, um, and the, the reason is that's how people are finding homes these days. It's right. not yeah. just online on the, on the big portals. You really want to showcase the home in video. Um, but really, I think the main thing about, about listing a home right now is, is being realistic on price knowing your seller's motivation as to why they want to make a move. Because yep. there's so many stories right now of sellers who sell their home to take advantage of this, of this low inventory. They sell the home without a plan. The home it closes, you know, it gets a contract on the first day. Yep. They're out of the house in 30 days with no plan to go somewhere else. And they're living now in an extended stay hotels or apartments or with family or friends, or they just end up renting something. Right. And it's, um, it's sad to see that. So really we spend a lot of our time Focusing on what is that client's motivation? Are they just taking advantage of the market? And if they are, what's their plan once we close that house? Because it's going to sell and it's going to sell quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, <coughs> sorry, didn't mean to cut you. Well, up. I was going to say also the, you know, and that being said, you know, we do get a lot of offers. So really now, you know, a, a lot of our, um, you know, you might get. I've had as many as 44 offers on a, on a house. And, and wow. so, it, <laughs> so it's about navigating the offer. And a lot of people say, you know, well, the home's going to sell so quickly. And, and they do sell quickly, but it's really about choosing the right offer for, your, for the seller and helping the seller navigate those offers, have the, giving them the data and the information, the, what they're going to net, and what really is the best offer for them, presenting those to, all the offers to them and letting them choose the based on the information we give them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Love so it. it's a tricky market. It is a very yes. unique market. Yeah. Um, yes. You mentioned, too, that so how you market a condo and how you market a million-dollar home, how are you guys disparing between the two of those? Um, there, there really isn't other than, uh, as Craig said, sort of understanding what the motivation is. Um, but we treat every client exactly the same. We put forth the same marketing effort, the same, uh, professional photography, the same professional videos, the same, um, social media platforms. I mean, everything gets that same special touch to the same people. Um, so regardless of the price point, they're correct. still getting the same level of service. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the difference may be for you know, a, a luxury home, we may be putting that on a luxury home tour, yeah, um, different types of open houses. And you just again, knowing the market, knowing where the homes are, what's going to best suit that home for, the mar for a marketing plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Regina, how has yes. your accounting background helped you kind of better coach your clients? Um, well, I would start by saying with uh, first-time home buyers um, who may not be uh, well versed in understanding interest rates, um, principal and interest payments, um, adjustable rates, any of those um, sort of um, avenues, I sort of can explain those things to them as they're meeting with lenders so that they understand when they talk to lenders what the lender is saying. Yep. And then, of course, throughout the process, um, they can always come to me and say, you know, hey, my lender sent me this document. Can you help me, you know, so. Decipher um, the lingo. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yep. So I think I provide a really good value, um, as I said, especially for first time home buyers from that perspective, yeah. um, as well as anybody, really. I mean, just having that background and that knowledge, I can be their first point of contact to answer a question 
um, if needed. So. Yeah. And I know you guys have had a lot of success with out-of-town buyers. Yeah, actually. Um, and sellers. Yeah, yeah buyers and sellers. Um, it's there, So much migration is happening right now in, in, in the U.S. that um, we've got a ton of people coming in. Um, early during COVID, I had several um, foreign uh, Canadian um, listers who want sellers rather, and um, it was quite interesting because they didn't want to come here. So yeah. I had to sort of step it up and do pretty much all the coordinating of movers and car um, uh, transports and packers and house inventory and pictures and goodwill and. And, uh, you know, it all worked out in the end. But I thought yeah. that that was a very good experience um, for the seller as well as um, myself, actually. Um, and, again, going back to my accounting background um, with the uh, FERPTA with respect to um, the Canadian sellers, um, I was able to provide to them local CPA firms that they could converse with and get their FERPTA requirements taken care of, yeah. um, you know, as, as needed. So, yeah. yeah. So with your background, you probably have some people that you could refer those out to now. So if you have foreign buyers or whatever, you oh, can absolutely. kind of refer them to accountants that you used to work with or whatever, That's, yeah. which is huge because yeah. then you can have that dialogue with them and know what's going on with, with your clients at any given point. Absolutely. Really, yes. uh, just to interject, and with the, the comfort level that Regina provided to her clients, we had the, the first one was a Canadian seller. It was a referral from one of her friends back east and that led into three other additional sellers oh, wow. in Canadians. a neighborhood all, yeah, yeah. all canadians <laughs> oh, yes. wow. they um they knew each other because they kind of lived in the same neighborhood they didn't they didn't know each other in canada but they yeah. knew each other here and that they all wanted to sell so you know that she ended up with you know four transactions yeah. based on right the, the providing that level of very high level of service and because they could not come here it wasn't that they didn't want to they yep. could not come here and um and get back home and without quarantining and all that. So I think the level of service she provided really led to the the referrals, very very satisfied sellers, and um, and they got the job done. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yep. Yeah, it almost sounded like you had kind of like a concierge service really? a little bit yeah. where like yes. it wasn't just like, hey, we're not just here to sell your home. Like right. we'll help you with that, but also we're going to help you take care of the other things since you're not here with Absolutely. just getting the house ready for possibly listing it. Absolutely, yes. Um, that's huge. Yep. Yeah, yep. I can understand why you got referrals from, uh, from the neighbors <laughs> and all the other people as well. If, you, yep. if you're going above and beyond and doing all those things, that's yep. awesome. Absolutely. And, and, and on the flip side of that, uh, the buyers that are coming in that I've um, had um, from other states, it's sort of that same thing in reverse. They're not here, so it's thank goodness for all the videos that everyone's putting online on, on homes because yep. at least they have something to look at. Um, I do the video walkthroughs and, and we talk about it. And, you know, um, when they move here, they again are unfamiliar with things. So here comes the list of providers and vendors and, yep. you know, all of the uh, extra stuff that, that I think is beneficial to people moving here that have no idea where to even start. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if there's like a, a particular listing that your client's looking at, but there's not a video, you're actually going out to the property and doing a, a listing video kind yes. of walkthrough if yes. you would? Yep, or absolutely. FaceTime. Or, or FaceTime, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they could actually, it's basically like they're there. Right, yeah. Yeah. exactly. I love yep. that. Very, very good idea. Yep. Um, with this market kind of being weird, it's something that I'm kind of asking everybody, but is, what's kind of some different buyer strategies you guys are kind of putting in place with your clients? Well, I think really, you know, having, uh, getting, when a buyer wants to buy a home, really, Finding out, um, <coughs> getting them pre-qualified, first of all. Yeah, like yeah. They have to be completely ready to buy a house. Yep. And they have to be very, we have to do a lot of education on the front end about what this market's like and how, um, and really what might be involved. Because you, uh, you, what you don't want is your buyer to go into this thinking they're going to get a house like yeah. this weekend. Because yep. they may or they may not. But really, it's about presenting your best offer um, and finding out, and giving the strategies to your buyer so they can kind of be involved, they will be involved in that process of selecting those strategies that they can that they can feel comfortable with. Yeah. Are they waiving appraisals, which we don't like to do, but do they want to? Do they want to waive inspections? Do they want to um, come in with non-refundable earnest money? What are those, you know, there's so many different strategies for buyers right now, um, just in the, in the offer. So we've laid that all out for our buyers and we make sure that, you know, what are they comfortable with? What are we not comfortable with yep. And um, as agents? And then letting them sort of help be part of that process. Because yeah. the worst thing you want to do is when you're writing a contract to start laying out all these um, strategies that they're not comfortable or they haven't heard of. So right. we do a lot right. of upfront um, coaching with our clients to yep. get them comfortable with the market. You know, as far as finding homes, really just being available immediately when a home comes on the market, get out there, look at it, talk to the agent, build some relationships. We have, you know, being 34 years, have a lot of relationships in the industry. Right. Yeah. 
Um, or if it's an agent I don't know, like really talking to them, feeling out you know, what the seller's motivations are. What does the seller want out of this transaction? Do they need a lease back? Do they need um, extra time on an escrow? You know, what, what are they looking for? Yeah. So kind of finding out those, strat those um, motivations for that seller. And then as far as um, buyers, really getting them on the portals, helping them look for homes, looking at the hot sheets as agents every single day, multiple times throughout the day to see what's new on the market. And then, um, you know, another little strategy is like maybe looking at, um, I heard about a great one last week at the, um, at the Tom Ferry Summit actually in Dallas last yeah. week where they, um, an agent um, is looking at, she was saying that she's had success with buyers looking over their price point, 10% over their price point, looking at longer days on market, homes that have been on the market for quite a while, then maybe going after those homes yep. and trying to negotiate. Great idea. We have low days on market here, but. Yeah, you know, what is our average day on market like right now? Like 20 days right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's over <laughs> 25 days, it's been on for right? a year basically. Yeah. And time to start lowballing them. Exactly. So it's, so it's really about just knowing, you know, there, there's so many different strategies in how you write the contract, but it's um, really educating the buyer on those and what are they most comfortable with going forward yeah because you know you've got to know that well i think you bring up a good point too i actually was uh talking to an agent last night and she was like well what's the value on knowing a bunch of agents in town like why would i want to meet other agents well because they have the listings and whenever they're looking at offers it helps to know a bunch of agents in town because they're typically going to work with an agent that they know like and trust absolutely and have experience with so yeah. having that 34 years of experience where you've right. met most of these agents already that's yeah, That's I mean, huge. in a listing, in, in a buy, in a in a contract presentation to a seller, when you can say, "Yeah, I've worked with Regina, I've worked with Brayden, I've worked with these agents," they will get the job done. Yep, it goes a long way. Yeah, you yeah, know, it speaks volumes. That. Yeah, um, I know you've got a pretty cool background with everything you've been doing uh, out in the uh, the world of like hiking and stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tell everybody a little bit about that. So yeah, I know you're trying to conquer like the seven summits, and you've been that's hiking all over the that, world. Yeah, and that's a goal, um, future goal. Yep. Right now, I've been doing a lot of hiking, climbing locally. I've been I um, I climbed a couple of big mountains, Kilimanjaro, a couple of years ago. Went to Everest Base Camp a couple of years ago as well. Um, that's kind of led into some other training and work I've done. So lately I've been getting into more rock climbing yep. and that type of thing. So yeah, for an old 60 year old guy, I'm kind of like <laughs> rediscovering my um, climbing passions. It's pretty awesome. I remember yeah. when we met, I was yeah. just like, what you're doing? What? <laughs> That's pretty impressive. I was out rock climbing last weekend. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 It's yes. definitely a, it's a different mindset that people have to have to kind of be doing these things. Mm -hmm. These hikes are really intense. I've got a couple of buddies that have, have yeah. done a couple of these mountains and it's, some scary stuff. So yeah, and I then my, my new, th the, who, and I, the progression to rock climbing was kind of interesting, and then I ended up being, you know, getting into that, so like literally just being on the side of a cliff looking down, yep. something <laughs> new for me, but a lot of fun. Yeah. And did you go to like AZ on the Rocks and stuff like that? Is that where you do your training? Or I do. You? I go to, um, yeah, like Arizona uh, Phoenix Rock Gym down in Tempe is yep. one, and then, um, and lately just getting out on the rock out by Superior Globe area. Yep. And, um, and uh, what's, what's your kind of hobbies, Regina? Um, I actually enjoy cycling. Yeah. I do hiking, not to the extent that Craig does. <laughs> um, There's not he, many that do. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, actually had uh, offered the indoor climbing, and I thought, well, okay, I'll give it a try. I'm a little afraid of heights, but maybe the indoor thing, I'll feel a little bit safe yeah. with that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I actually um, just signed up for the Rock and Roll Half Marathon in January. Oh, very cool. I am not a runner by any means of the imagination, but... You know, I'm going to give it my best. Yep. So, yeah, something to work towards. I love it. Yeah. Um, what, what part of town do you guys live in? Uh, I'm in North Scottsdale. North Scottsdale? Yeah. Okay. And I live right here in Paradise Valley. Okay. And uh, why do you choose the neighborhoods that you guys are in? I mean, why wouldn't you live in Paradise Valley? <laughs> Paradise Valley is hard to be. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> are you in like a specific community of Paradise I am, Valley? I, I, and I'm joking, but yeah, I, no, live I'm in, um, <laughs> I live in a neighborhood called Cheney Estates. It's okay. right off Scottsdale Road and. Um, excuse me, Scottsdale Road and Cheney, and really it was an investment. I bought, the, I, I, we, my partner and I sensed out that it was a really good trend, a good buy. And so we uh, made an offer, got the house and, um, and moved there. And yeah. then it's, it, well, it has ended up being an amazing investment, which as a real estate agent, I have moved quite a bit. Yep. And I think I've lived like, <laughs> I don't know, in every corner of the valley. And um, so it's just one of the things that I do as a real estate agent, like, and um I'm also an investor in real estate, okay. and so that kind of um, goes hand in hand with my wanting to move move around and and that type of thing. Yeah. Tell us about some of your investments. So right now I have, um, I think we've sold a couple. So I think I have six properties now um, in the residential space. Okay. And I um, and single family condos. Single family, okay. um, all single family right now. Okay. 
and I used to have a lot of condos, and now they're a and specific they're pr- part of town. Pretty or much all, all West Valley, Goodyear. Okay. Yeah, I, I love the Goodyear area for right. investing. Remember you told me that. Yeah, it's right yeah. off I ten, three hundred three is there, easy access, a lot of new construction. So I, I I sold all the older homes, and pretty much everything's in new construction. You were telling me about the community center, weren't you? In Goodyear. In Goodyear. Yeah, Goodyear's built a brand new community center off Australia Parkway, south of I ten, and it's phenomenal. It's you know, free pools. to residents, is yeah, right? If they live there, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, pretty that's pretty awesome. Amazing. Yeah, that's and they pretty have a lot awesome. of parks and a lot of lot, it's just for I believe for an investment, um, for an investor to have a property there. You know, the the people who choose to live in my homes, they they love the lifestyle, they love the area. Um, clients who buy out there, I sell a lot of homes. I'm from Litchfield Park, so it's right out in that yep. area. I have a lot yep. of clients out there. And it's um, it's a great lifestyle, you know, to live in, raise your family, enjoy yourself. It's it's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there like a specific product of like single family homes? Is like a certain neighborhood you got kind of gone after? Or yeah, I like the I like for because the ease of lifestyle, ease of maintenance. I like these kind of zero lot line, okay. easy homes. Yep. Um, not much yard. To take not care much of. yard. Um, they people are busy. They don't want to be taking care of a yard, yep. and so it just makes it easy. Okay. And then, um, so I have that investment. Then I, I do a lot of investing in the commercial real estate space as well. Okay. Yeah. And want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I work with a lot of um, a lot of them. I don't own personally, but I'm in, involved in. You know, we invest in them. Okay. And so I'm in. I think I'm in about nine ho- buildings around the valley right now. Awesome. Yeah, that um, a friend of mine finds, and we, he puts together. Um, Partnerships. He's a commercial broker, okay. and we ended up buying them and holding them, getting hold tenants them. in, and yeah, leasing yeah. them out. Okay. Yeah, leasing them out, and then eventually they'll be sold. Yep. Yeah. Love so I love that. It's a good investment. It sounds like a good investment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Regina, and you said you're in North Scottsdale. North Scottsdale. What neighborhood are you in? Um, a community called Bellasera. Bellasera. Okay. And um, I sort of uh, was one of the migrants that moved here 11 years ago from um, Connecticut. Although I'm originally from California, that's a long story. Um, but uh, anyways, coming here, not really knowing a lot about the state in general, I just gravitated towards the, the desert beauty of North, North Scottsdale yep. as opposed to being more uh, downtown or um, in, the, in the center of the city. So um, I, I love it up there. It's peaceful. It's quiet. I have close access to all kinds of trails and just ride my bike right out of my garage and take off for, you know, 20 miles, and it's it's easy. So yeah. I love it. Yeah. As a cyclist, there's, like, no better area of town than being kind of north up there. It's, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's getting a little bit uh, crowd, more crowded up that way. Um, so, you know, you always have to watch for cars no matter what. Yeah. But, um, but absolutely, head out at, you know, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning and – ride for two or three hours by the time you get home everyone else is just getting out on in the car so yep. it's it's a lot of fun plus you just got so much beauty up there everything is just gorgeous yeah, yeah. so natural desert landscape absolutely it's just, yeah yeah um, one of my favorite trails is brown's ranch up there oh yes absolutely yeah, I just love getting i do up there. that probably at least one time a month oh yeah. yeah 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 it's a lot of fun i take my dog up there he loves it yeah <laughs> it's just gorgeous right now especially this time of year yes. Every, all, all the uh, flowers are changing and yep. everything it's just yes. really pretty up there yeah absolutely very cool yep um, was there anything else that you guys want to chat about while we're on here today? Um, you know, speaking of investor, yeah. invest, per, I personally um, invest in real estate, but I also have a um, represent a lot of my buyers in in the investment space. So a lot of my clients started out with one house. They have I believe one of my my biggest investor client has um, nine units, okay. and they. Um, so I work a lot with clients who maybe started out as a as buying for themselves, yeah, and yeah. they realize the potential of owning real estate as an investment vehicle. And so I, I um, help them buy and sell yep. and increase their portfolio. So that is another niche that I really specialize in. Absolutely. And work yeah. in with buyers and cool. sellers in the investment space. Love that. That's yeah. huge. Um, yeah. yeah, especially with today's market and how many people are coming in from out of state and right. yeah. looking for opportunities in Arizona because right. everyone hears that how great of a market we have right now. And yep. it's, uh, there's still reasonable price point compared to some of the uh, surrounding states. Yeah, uh, you know, for California, sure. Colorado, and stuff like that. It's just still crazy expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, so we still have a, a reasonable price point that people could still buy some right. investment properties and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I have investors right now buying in this crazy market, but they're still buying. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, it's still, uh, for what it is, there's still plenty of value here compared to some of the other surrounding neighbors. And right, so and, there's, and there's still room for the mom. You know, like, in fact, at Tom Ferry last week, one of the things we were talking about was that um, a lot of people's perception is that the that most of the investors are institutional investors in the Valley right now, but still, you know, 80% of all investment properties are owned by mom and pop investors. Right. So it seems we're here about the big institutional yeah, yeah. hedge fund investors, and certainly they own lots of houses. But your, you know, your average investors, 
mom and pop, they own two or three homes. Yep. And um, so that's, I encourage my younger clients, that I work a lot with first-time home buyers as well, that you know, really look at the potential of, of what does a couple of real estate or homes mean to your portfolio and what and I showed them how that can grow their wealth. Right. Yep. Yeah, yep. the tax implications yeah. yes. and yep. uh, the yep. equity they could earn right. and just all the different benefits that, yep. they, that you get from home ownership. Exactly. Yeah, I would say, you know, just to kind of touch back on your, you know, um, we still have a little bit of room to grow here in Arizona um, price-wise compared to other states. Um, I always sort of felt that Arizona was sort of that hidden gem. Like we were always undervalued. Yep. Um, and what we had to offer and with whatever happened in 2020 and 2021 it just all of a sudden Arizona is like shot to the top and and really boosted a lot of our, our home value to where it really should be actually I agree so um, I agree yeah we don't have the ski mountain like Colorado and we don't have the right. beach like California but we're centered for all of those that's and right so I mean, in terms of ease of travel i mean there's no better location than arizona that's right and we have amazing things here yeah yeah we do state, i mean yeah. Yeah. Yep. and we've got state. mountains as well and i mean Absolutely. you could drive with flagstaff and do skiing and there's yep. plenty of other things to do yep. um, oh yeah we just don't have the beach so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> eventually that might come it's only five hours global <laughs> warming yeah, yeah. that's a thing um well awesome right. um Craig, Regina, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Braden. Appreciate um, it. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Break It Down with Braden. Stay tuned for another episode. See you guys soon.